blogging, we hear about it all the time. In fact, those days of fountain pen writing and our uh, notepads and so forth, they may be history for many of us. Some of us will still use our fountain pens, I'm sure. But today it's blogging. And there are many ways in which to incorporate blogs within your class. I'm sure many of you have heard this term blog but really have not thought about how to integrate blogging within your classroom setting. So that's the purpose of this show. We're going to walk you through some activities, some tools, some ideas for integrating blogging in your class. First of all, you have to realize blog is also short for weblog or a chronological collection of personal commentaries about your readings or about life or about situations. You can create these from anywhere you have an internet connection. You might add video to it and do vlogging or video-based blogging. You might uh, be one of hundreds of millions of people around the world who share their ideas through blogging. Now, some of you, of course, have a smiley view of the world. Others of you have a more frowny kind of view of the world. But hey, that's your choice, how you want to blog. As an instructor, you might think about making your blog very personal yet professional sharing notes, sharing links, assignments, due dates, keeping those students up to date of what you expect within your class. You know, there are pros to all this, the quickness of a blog, the flexibility, the ownership. It's my blog. There are also cons to blogs. You know, technologies can get frustrating at times if you try and do too much. There might be a lot of reading within your class if everyone's reading everybody else's blog. They might not be private. And some things might get out that students don't want to have get out. The theoretical rationale is multifaceted. We want students to reflect on their thinking, to share and construct ideas with one another, negotiate ideas, to juxtapose ideas against one another, in effect to dual code things, maybe visually and verbally, and to get feedback on their understandings of the content. In the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, they showed that blogging and feedback on blogs increased student passing rate in chemistry classes. At BYU University and at U uh, Utah State, where David Wiley's taught, he finds that blogging is a good tool to bring people in from around the world in open teaching, to open your class up beyond your students to others around the world that can bring in new perspectives and sharing. You might share announcements, reminders of tasks, whatever it is, it's a communication tool, a networking tool, a linking tool, a branching off vehicle for your class, a way to get students to reflect on articles, discussions, dialogue in the class. But there are many tools for this and many ways to share your hyperlinks and your multimedia. Some of you might use tools like Blogger. That's the tool that I use for mine. It's from Google and it's free. Other tools include WordPress, which is an open source tool, Movable Type, which tends to be a little more on the professional side of things with varying degrees of, of cost, Zanga, which has a huge online community of users, very popular tool, Tumblr, with more features and a very rich media set, Posterius, simple but functional, Supio, which is beyond blogging and more of a scrapbook with multimedia embedded in it. Edmodo, which is, might have more protected blogging spaces, more privacy embedded in it, and more um, opportunities for sharing notes and, and messages. Twitter is a tool that many of you have heard about called microblogging, 140 characters or less to share course announcements and lesson plans. Very short blog posts from your grocery store or your train station. You might get students actually to follow Twitter posts of experts in your field, industry leaders. And then in terms of grading all this stuff, you might have qualitative ways as well as quantitative options in your class. So microblogging might be something you use. Trackbacks lets you get notified of who's referencing your blog and how popular your blog is. Metatagging might help people index your blog or subscribe to your blog somehow. But be cautious about what students are posting. Give them guidelines. Give them scaffolds. Teach them about the power of ownership and hyperlinking within blogs. Instructors might have blogs, but so might students. Students might have team blogs, cross-cultural blogs, language blogs. 
You might have critical friends who give feedback to each other on their blog posting. That's a way to share ideas. That's a way that you don't die teaching your course with blogging. Because if you don't have critical friends, peers giving feedback to each other, you might have to give feedback. This way you get peers to give feedback. They're a free resource. You might have them read online language blogs if it's a language class, expert blogs in different disciplines, business, medicine, education, cultural kinds of blogs. There are many things. And maybe you have your students write summaries of their blogs, which is what you grade. Maybe you have them expand one particular blog post into a paper or condense a whole series of blogs into a super summary. You might have competitions. You might share blogs from previous years, archive them, or assign them to do video blogs with video wrapped around the blog so you can see the student reflection on their learning. Many types of blogging experiences are possible today. It's not always just text. Scaffold it. Make sure students understand where they're going with this, what the purpose is, what the mission is, what the criteria are, what you're expecting how appropriate different content or inappropriate might be. Make sure they get feedback. Everyone wants feedback on everything they do online, in, in particular with blogging. You don't want to blog in a vacuum. But maybe instructors don't read blogs, but students read each other's blogs. You might assign them, as I said, as critical friends, or maybe to bring in their blog postings from each week into a face-to-face -face class if it's blended. You bring in the transcript, circle the concepts learned, discuss those, make this blog come alive. Come back to it in many kinds of activities, right? Maybe have them post their blogging ideas within discussion forums so they're reusing their blog ideas. And then subscribe to others' blogs and look for commonalities across blogs. Other guidelines include keep this assignment somewhat simple, let them select the tools, and let them select where they're going with the blogging blog postings. Maybe let them select their critical friends. Post sample blogs from previous semesters or testimonials of how it worked. Praise those that are doing well. Praise those so they know that they're on task within their blog uh, system, right? Get procedures down. Once you use blogs one semester, create procedures the next time around. Maybe where you set minimal length guidelines or number of posting guidelines or feedback guidelines. You know, if it's a video blog, maybe three minutes, four minutes, five minutes maximum. No more than ten. But keep in mind, there are, as I said, millions and millions of blogs, hundreds of millions, and many of these have educational ramifications if you think creatively about how you're using blogs in your classroom. Think about how you're going to use blogs in your classroom setting. Think about how you might get your students, in fact, to reflect on their blogs, to think more critically about what they're learning within your classroom setting, right? And so each time you use blogs, there might be new ideas that come out new ways to think about including blogs maybe across sections of your class maybe with older and younger students of your classes the older ones mentoring the younger ones and maybe vice versa right there are many ways in which you might blog within your classroom settings and your students might blog and you might link blogs to other activities like podcasts and wikis and so forth but it's reflecting on content reflecting on what they're learning and recycling back through it and putting their learning on display for others to see. It doesn't matter the tool that you use necessarily. What matters is the pedagogy you're wrapping around the blogging situation. So think carefully about what you're doing. I wish you luck in your blogging journey. I hope that you find a blog tool that's useful for you and your students. Many possibilities for learning and sharing collaboration with blogs. Good luck to everyone.